about done, in other words. Good morning! Uh, for those of you here in person, that is kind of weak. For those of you live stream, watching, you did an excellent job. I am confident we can hear you. Let's try this again. Good morning! Much better. Hey, we are gathered here for worship this morning outdoors. Thank God for a beautiful day. It is August in Nebraska, so it could have been 90 degrees already with about 95% humidity. And I wonder how many of you may have decided to stay at home. I don't know. I'm just thankful that it's a beautiful, beautiful day today. So whether you're joining us today here in person or live stream, we're glad we're gathered here to worship our God, to give Him thanks and praise. If you're here in person, you should have got a worship sheet when you came in that's got the songs and a few of the worship elements on that for you. You can also go to holycv.org, especially those of you joining us live stream. Go to holycv.org and on the outdoor worship image there, click that and it'll have the songs for you. we got three songs today. You can open up with two and close with one song. And one of the songs is a newer song we've been working on. Just a few other pointers, reminders as we do that. Uh, just a reminder, first of all, maybe a thank you to those parents who have gone online and registered their children or their youth for Sunday school and confirmation. It's great. I know there's some more of you that expect to sign up, so please do that this week if you can. That'll give us a really good head count of what we're going to expect as we do kind of a virtual uh, living room style Sunday school and confirmation classes this year. Also, just a reminder that next Sunday, while it is Labor Day, it is the first Sunday of the month, so it is a communion Sunday. So if you register to be here for in-person worship, make sure you indicate how many are going to be communing. If you're joining us for live stream worship that day, I encourage you to come through the drive through time from any time between noon and 3 p.m. And Dale and I and a few others will be out here to serve you communion and give you that gift there. All right. Still in the midst of a pandemic, we can't do any virtual head bumps. We can do virtual head bumps. Um, no, you know, physical hugs or handshakes. For those of you here, go ahead and get up, move around a little bit. Just see who's there. Shake some hands. You know, do some virtual fist bumps. Those of you joining us live stream, do the same. Shout out. Let's say hello. Let's greet one another in the name of Jesus. Please join me in prayer. Good morning, Jesus. We have come to you today in this wonderful setting of your creation to worship you and offer up praise for who you are and what you have done for us. You have brought salvation to us all. Your Holy Spirit has given us the ability to reach out to others, offering our helping hand as we journey through this life. You have truly blessed us and loved us beyond measure. We pray this in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Please stand as we sing together. That's your name. That's your name. That's your name. The mountain shake and crumble. That's your name. The oceans roll. Your name, the morning breaks. 
Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Luke 10, verses 25 through 37. Then an expert in Moses' teachings stood up to test Jesus. He asked, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, What is written in Moses' teachings? What do you read there? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus told him, You're right. Do this, and life will be yours. But the man wanted to justify his question. So he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man went from Jerusalem to Jericho. On the way, robbers stripped him, beat him, and left him for dead. By chance, a priest was traveling along the road. When he saw the man, he went around him and continued on his way. Then a Levite came to that place. When he saw the man, he too went around him and continued on his way. But a Samaritan, as he was traveling along, came across the man. When the Samaritan saw him, he felt sorry for the man, went to him, and cleaned and bandaged his wounds. Then he put on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, the Samaritan took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. He told the innkeeper, Take care of him. If you spend more than that, I'll pay on my return trip. Of these three men, who do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by robbers? The expert said, The one who was kind enough to help him. Jesus told him, Go and imitate his example. Here ends the scripture lesson. Well, good morning again as we gather here for worship outside, outdoors, which is great because I was watching the live stream as we were singing and listening, and you can see the leaves kind of, you know, falling down. It's a good old hint of fall and a day like today. It's beautiful outside. So good to be here with you to worship our God. And I, I love this new song that we've been learning. If you joined us for the last few live streams, you've been here in person, this new song, you know, You Won't Let Go. That is just a powerful promise for us to cling to, especially in, in the midst of the, the uncertainties we find in our culture, in our political climate, and everything that's going on today. I mean, just pop on to the internet or you watch the news, and there are a lot of things that are very uncertain. There is a lot of uncertainty, you know, and people disagree about the virus and how do we, you know, adapt to the virus, to what's going on politically, and who will or won't be elected and what that means for our nation and the direction of things to things about police and brutality and racism and all of that mixed up makes us a very chaotic and uncertain time. And how important it is for us to know that we have a God who all of this promises to be with us. A God who promises to never let go. A God who's always holding on to you, to me, to all of us, regardless of the situation we find ourselves in. That's a promise we often hear from our God. I am with you. I am with you always. You don't have to be afraid because I am there. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of this beautiful day, this amazing day that you've given us as Lord, we gather for worship. Those gathered here in person, to those gathering live stream, to those who are watching later on YouTube, Lord, we are gathered here together in the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to the God who won't let go of us, the God who loves us always, the God who loves us without any conditions, without any restrictions. We thank you for that amazing grace and love. We pray this, Jesus, in your name. And God will say, Amen. All right, well, as we gather here, this is the last Sunday of a series that we've been in called Rethinking Church. And we've kind of been exploring God's Word and, and talking about, you know, what does it mean for us to be church? To be God's people gathered together around His gifts, His gifts of Word and Sacrament. God's people gathered together, you know, whether we're gathering in person or gathering virtually, still gathered together. In the midst of what we just talked about earlier, all the chaotic, you know, all the chaos 
all of the things that are just unfolding in our world right now that makes us maybe angry, that makes us anxious and uncertain. And as we've done that, we explored what it means for us to be connected together, whether what it means for us to be gifted by God through our talents and experiences, and how we use those gifts to bless one another and to bless the community in which God has placed us. So as we kind of wrap this up today, we're going to start with a question here. You know, we've done this for a number of times now, and here's the question. If you want to respond, if you're watching virtually, if you want to shout out, if you're here in person, you can do so. The question is this. i got a bucket here. The question is, what fills your bucket? Now think about that just for a moment. What fills your bucket? And as you think about that, maybe you think of things. I originally had a big bunch of props up here, and I decided there's just too much to handle up here, so I just will talk about things. But maybe one of the things that fills your bucket is... Um, is work. I don't know how many of you enjoy work. Some of us really do enjoy hard work. Not many of you raised your hands. <laughs> or maybe maybe his family fills your bucket. Oh, a few more hands went up. I'm sorry. Some of you, you're just not filling their buckets. Um, maybe maybe it's, you know, working in the garden. That's not my bucket. That's my um, killing things. I do not have a green thumb. Or maybe it's being outdoors or, or watching a good movie. Or maybe it's ha you know, taking a vacation, going on a trip. You know, a lot of things we talk about that fill our buckets. And even you know, being here in church is part of what fills our bucket. And as we do that, you know, it's part of the reason we gather as God's people. Because God really does fill our bucket. And that's kind of what is going on here in the text that Dale read for us just a little earlier. Luke chapter 10. It's a text that is probably familiar to most of you that are gathered here today as we gather for this worship service. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan. And let's kind of back into this text just a little bit here. We have this expert in Moses' teaching. You know, an, an expert in God's Word, the Hebrew God's Word, which would be you know, all that we call the Old Testament. And he's going to come, like they try to do many other times, he's going to kind of trap Jesus, and also kind of to justify himself. Justify who he is and, and how he's living his life. And so he asks this question, you know, teacher, you know, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to be certain that someday, you know, when I breathe my last breath, I'm going to be with God in heaven forever? He says, well, you know, what does the scripture say? And he quotes from the Old Testament. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as what? As you love yourself. He says, well, I've done all these things. You know, right? what does it mean to do this? And, and Jesus goes on and tells them this story, this parable. And we've hit this a number of other times, so we're not going to dive super deep into this parable. We're going to kind of just touch on some of the key elements here. But he tells us here about a guy that goes on a trip. Goes on a trip and he gets beaten up. Mugged. Left for half dead. And he's lying there. And a number of people come by. And what do they do? Well, they, you know, they go around him. They, you know, I don't know if you've ever done that before. Act like you didn't see something that's going on. If I don't see this car that's stuck on the side of the road, I won't feel guilty about just driving by, right? Anyone ever do that before? Really? I'm the only one? I do it. Thanks, Dale. I'm glad you do it, too. <laughs> I'm kidding, too. See, there's a few of us that are honest about that. You know, or, or that, you know, when you know something's going on, you know you should maybe step in and help. You know, and sometimes they have that, like, news programs where somebody actually step in and do something. These three little religious guys, these, these three that should be the church, they do what? They just simply ignore the situation. But then the one guy, the one guy that should be an outcast, an outsider, is the one that comes and he stops to take care of this guy. He takes care of him and, you know, bandages his wounds, puts him on his own donkeys, you know, puts him in his own car and puts a seat warmer on if it's the winter time or something like that. Gets him all cozy, brings him to, you know, a hotel and says, take care of this guy. I'll be back in a few days. You know, here's my credit card. Any expense. Of course, they didn't have credit cards back then, but it'd be like today. Here's my credit card. Whatever the charges are, I'll take care of it. It's on me. I don't know about you, how many of you would be willing to do that. I mean, I have a hard time doing that. It's one thing to help somebody on the side of the road. It's another thing to say, here's my credit card. Whatever expense they tally up here, I'll cover it. 
And then Jesus asked this question. And you know what the question is, right? The question is this. And you can type it if you're watching this live stream. I want you to shout it out. Shout the question. The question is what? You know, who is or who was a neighbor to him? Say that with me. Who was a neighbor to him? Yeah, and he says, well, the Samaritan was, of course. You know, it's obvious, Jesus, you know. The guy's educated, he knows. And he says, go then and do likewise. Go and follow this man's example. And see, the point that Jesus was getting at, and the point that connects with us as we talk about the church today, the church in the midst of civil unrest, the church in the midst of a pandemic, the church in the midst of, and we've talked about this before as well, a, a post-church culture, which here's a quick summary of what the post-church culture is. That means the church no longer influences the culture the way that it once did. It used to be. And some of you are old enough to remember when the church, if the church said this is right or this is wrong, this is how we do things, everything revolved around the church. Everything revolved around Sunday morning. And now the church is often put on the sidelines. Often, you know, those of us who, who go to church, who, who believe and have this relationship with God and Jesus, feel like, you know, we are on the outside. So how are we the church today? Well, the reason I picked this text is I, I think in some ways, you know, we could say the same thing like this religious leader did, this expert in Moses' teachings. Well, Jesus, I've done all these things. And Jesus is saying now, let me tell you a story. But it's just so easy for us to be like those three who wanted to be on the sidelines and talk about God's love. And yet, Jesus talks about God's love is investing with his life, the life of the Samaritan and the life of someone else. So here's the point that I think Jesus is getting at because ultimately, you know, this is what's going to shape us. Because we can, again, talk about this, we can all feel bad and it can make you feel guilty. That's not the point here. Because as we gather here, we gather here to celebrate God who loves us. God who loves us so much that he gave his son Jesus. Jesus' love for you, for me, for the world is a love that is unconditional. It has no strings attached, no restrictions. He loves you. And as God sends us out as his people, as we gather and he sends us out, he sends us out to share that love. So, brought with me some cups here. Little red cups. Sorry, no drinks to share. Some of you laugh. And, you know, little, little, little red cups here. And, you know, so when we talk about, you know, what fills our bucket, what fills our lives, you know, this gets to be like us, right? And so God sends us out, and this has actually got some water in it, you know, and, and, he, and he calls us to share love with others. So, you know, part of the idea is we come here with and receive God's love, and we share that love as we go out. You see, as we talk about the love that we have, the love that God has for us, the more assured we are, the more certain we are of God's love for us, the more we will pour out love for others. The more assured we are of God's love, the more we are poured out in love for others. Since Jesus is listening to this expert in Moses' teaching who's kind of going off, look, I did all these good things. I Just give me a little gratification. Hey, I'm good with God. And, and Jesus basically says, you don't understand it. And so he tells the story of these three who should understand God's love. These three religious leaders who should know God's love. But instead, their behavior shows they are not assured, they are not certain that God loves them. Because as we are more certain of God's love for us, the more we are poured out in love to others. Into the lives of one another as part of our church family and into the community of Lincoln and the world. So as we talk about that, of course, you know, we want to make sure, and that's part of the reason we gather together, you know, even on these unusual times, is we gather together so that we have more of God's love, you know, filling our lives. And the more that, you know, we have God's love filling our lives, the more assured we are of God's love, the more we are filled up with God's love, the more love we have what? Oh, you guys are so quiet this morning. The more we are... Filled out. I'm glad this is all wood here. The more we are filled out with God's love, the more we can be, I'll get away from the microphone here, the more we are poured out in love for others. And of course, the great thing with God's love, unlike this pell here, which eventually will grow empty, is God's love, that unconditional love, that love for us in Jesus that has no restrictions, that love that knows no bounds, is a love that continues to fill us up. And so we gather here this morning 
We gather here to celebrate a love for us and love for you that fills our lives. And as he fills our lives with love, he then sends us out to fill love into our community, into the lives of others. To love with an unconditional love that he has loved us. So as we talk about, you know, what does it mean to be the church today in these uncertain times, it means to be a people who are certain of God's love for us. A God who never lets go of us. A God who loves us, who loves you unconditionally. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done. And a God who sends us out to love the world, to love the community, to love all others as he has loved us. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the great gift of your love and your forgiveness. We pray, Lord, that you bless us. We would be certain of the love you have for us. That as we are certain of that love, as we are filled with your love, that we go out into our community and our world to share the love that you have shared with us. This we pray, Jesus, in your powerful name. Amen. So here's a, a challenge for you as you go out this week. As, as you see your life filled with God's love, and if you feel a little lack of that love, I mean, be certain of it. Dig into God's word. Read John 3.16. You know, God so loved, and put your name in there. You know, you know he loves you. But also then say, Lord, who are you calling me to pour out your love into? And maybe it's the people in your household right now. Maybe it's a co-worker, a classmate, a neighbor. Maybe it's a stranger. But who is God calling you? Who is he calling us as his people to pour out his love into the community and the world? This time we're going to profess our faith. We do so in these ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. So for those of you who have the sheets with you, they should be on there. For those of you joining us live stream, I don't know that they're on there. So you just, they are on there. Jeremy says they are. So you can look on there or you can do it all from memory and test your memory. Let's confess together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, now we come before God to confess our sins. And even as we talk about that love poured out, if we're honest, sometimes that we have been pouring out love into the lives of others. We've been pouring out, you know, anger and resentment and bitterness. We have, you know, sinned against our God. So together, let's confess our sins. We confess. I've got to have it in front of me. Sorry, I'm all God. Our <laughs> repentant prayer. We confess our sinful disobedience. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved others as you have loved us. We boldly call upon you in the name of Jesus, and for his sake, ask for your forgiveness. In your mercy, heal us, strengthen us, open our eyes to see your will for us, and fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may live for your glory. So here are God's promise. And again, you know, as we gather here, here's my green bucket, you know, God's love for us. And there's a lot of that love. Is God is pouring his love in us again through his son, Jesus Christ. That promise of love and forgiveness is yours. You hear that promise of love and forgiveness. All of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Well, this time we continue as we return a portion of the gifts that he's given to us through our tithes and offerings. If you're here in person this, this morning, there's the box there. If you didn't do that coming in, you can do that going out. You can also go online to give, do the text game. Again, our gifts that we give here are response to God's gift of love for us. It's not buying any merit or favor with him. And one of the ways that we've been expressing that love is our gifts to the community here through our public schools. I know we're wrapping that up, so if you really want to You'd be a part of that. Again, even just a $10 gift goes a long ways to help buy things like masks and other sanitary things and things the schools need to stay safe during this um, chaotic time. 
We turn our gifts to the Lord. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, so often we care about those that are hurting, but we fail to actually care for them. Lord, we pray for those that are hurting, either having health problems or emotional problems on our prayer list. And Jesus, we want to lift up Sherry, who's going to be having surgery this week. Lord, we also want to lift up Melody, who will be having surgery on September 8th, or in that area of time. Help her to be able to find the appropriate prosthetic after she recovers from the surgery. For Frida and Earl, who are facing worsening health issues. For Linda's mom, Irene, who is having memory problems. Lord, wrap your arms around them and hold them close. Lord, we ask that you bring healing to their lives. Lord, there is so much violence in our nation. Please help the leadership find solutions to this problem. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Let's sing together. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues of fire. continues pouring out in our lives through his son Jesus Christ. To do that, again, just a few other reminders. One, for those who've got children or youth for Sunday school confirmation class, please go online and sign them up so that we've got a good head count and we'll roll out some more information here fairly soon about what that's going to look like as we do kind of a virtual Sunday school and confirmation class. 
Well, also a reminder, next Sunday is, well, it's Labor Day. It is a communion Sunday. So if you're here in person, we'll have communion. If you're going to join us live stream, we invite you to come through our drive through communion from 12 noon to 3 p.m. And we'll see communion that way. All right. We all kind of quiet here. You look like you're ready. Are you ready? Maybe not. You guys are ready. We're all ready. We're going to go out now, and we're going to pour out God's love into the lives of the community, the lives of others. So we go in God's name, go in his love. God bless. Have a great week. Can I say really quick, wave hi.